Hello, welcome back to our beginner's animation course. In this part, we're going to be looking at the graph editor in more detail and learn about and learn the basics and how it works. So the graph editor can be found under Windows, Animation Editors, Graph Editor. So this is our graph editor right here. So over here on the left is essentially the channel box. Right now it's empty because we don't have anything selected. And here is the graph view. And when we have anything to graph, it will show up in here as a series of curves, like you briefly saw in the previous part. Up here are a lot of our tools and buttons and commands for using the graph editor. Now for this beginner's course, we're not going to be looking into every single one of these, but we're going to look into the basics of how the graph editor works when it comes to editing animation curves, as well as editing keyframes within the graph editor. So first we need something to demonstrate within the graph editor. Let me minimize that. I'll go ahead and create a polygon sphere again, and I'll just move it over here. We'll just simply do the same kind of animations that we had done before, where over here, since I'm going to translate or move this sphere, I'll hit Shift W to set keyframes for my translate X, Y, and Z channels, and I'm at frame one. So I'm going to move over here to frame, let's say 90, which would be three seconds when we're talking about 30 frames per second. Move it over here in this corner, Shift W again, and then I'll move over here around the middle and instead of going up like I've always done, let's just kind of go over here to this corner to the side and hit shift W. So now when we play our animation the sphere moves from one corner to the other. When we hit play you'll see what it does. Like so. So now let's go back to our graph editor. And now you'll see within the graph view I have some curves, some animation curves. As well as in the channel box you'll see I have my P sphere or polygon sphere selected because it's selected in the scene. If I deselect the sphere, you'll see the graph editor becomes empty again. So select my sphere. My P sphere is shown within the graph editor, and you'll see the keyed translate X, Y, and Z channels are showing up in here. You don't see rotation or scale or anything because they don't have keyframes associated with them. If I had applied keyframes to other channels like rotate X, Y, and Z and scale X, Y, Z, and they were highlighted red or pink, you would see them show up here in the graph editor as well. Now here is the graph view and you can move within the graph view the same way you can with your cameras in orthographic views. You can hold down the alt key, middle mouse click and drag to pan, as well as alt right click and drag to zoom. And if you ever get to a point where your curves are missing, if you've gone too far to the side, you can simply press the F key to frame your selection, which in this case is the sphere. You can also select individual channels over here in the channel box, and you'll see that only those become isolated within the graph view, so you don't necessarily see all three animation curves at once. So let's look at our Translate X channel specifically. So I've selected it here in the channel box of the graph editor, and you see I have this red curve, red indicating Translate X or X direction, and the curve kind of moves to the side here and then up really quickly. So what do all these values mean? First, let's look at all these numbers that you can see along the side and bottom of the graph view. To the left side of the graph view, you'll see here we start at zero in the middle and goes up in a positive direction like this, and then down in a negative direction like this. So it goes zero to five, ten, fifteen, zero to negative five, negative ten, negative fifteen. This vertical area of the graph indicates the value of the channel that we have selected, in this case Translate X. Are these little black dots are our keyframes that we set. And you can see I can click and drag a little marquee selection around the individual keyframes on the animation curve, or I can click and drag on the curve itself and select the entire curve here. But these little black dots are our keyframes that we've set. And so the numbers going from left to right along the bottom are the time in the timeline. You see here this is at frame one, you see the little red number one here, and it goes forward in time. So this keyframe that we set here is at frame 41, and this one is at frame 90. The red line going vertical through the graph editor is the frame that we're currently on. You'll see down here I'm on frame one. If I left click and drag through the time slider, that red line also moves left and right in the graph view. So this is essentially what the graph view is doing. It's showing you the keyframes that you've set shows you the motion of those keyframes as they interpolate between each other. So at frame one, 
if I select this keyframe, in the graph editor you'll see I have these two stat boxes, or stats. The first box says 1, the second box says negative 11.953. The first box is the frame that we're on, which is frame 1. The second box is the value of the keyframe set at frame 1, which is negative 11.953 for the Translate X channel. You can see over here in the channel box, Translate X is negative 11.953. This keyframe was set at frame 41 with a value of negative 12.408, which is pretty similar to negative 11.953. There's not a big difference, which is why the line is very almost straight left to right. It dips a little bit just because we have a slight value change. Essentially, it's the same uh, position, just further in time. So the line draws from frame 1 the first frame that was keyed to the next frame that was keyed at frame 41. So we have a line drawn between those two keyframes. And then the third keyframe was set way up here at frame 90 with a value of positive 11.626. So we had a large difference in value. So the line draws up to the positive 11. You see there's the value of the number 10 right here in our graph view. So we're graphing up to the positive 11 value up here in the graph view. So this line simply represents the changing in values along the timeline of this channel. Translate X. Translate Y you'll see did not change at all. The Translate Y channel is the up and down motion of the sphere and we didn't move it up and down at all. So at frame 1 it's at 0, at frame 41 it's at 0, and at frame 90 it's at 0. So there are three keyframes for the Translate Y channel where nothing changes. Just so you know, that's a little bit of an inefficiency in setting a keyframe for all three Translate X, Y, and Z channels. You have your efficiency versus convenience. So by having the shortcut for Translate X, Y, and Z being Shift W, I can conveniently set keyframes for all three channels, although I'm not actually changing one of those three channels, so it's not quite as efficient. So it's a bit of a trade-off. Uh, but you can come back here in the graph editor and simply select these three keyframes and hit the delete key and delete them. And you'll notice translate Y is no longer highlighted in red. It no longer has keyframes associated with it. Because those keys were empty, nothing was changing, nothing was happening, I can simply delete them. And then translate Z you'll see is kind of a mirror of our translate X. Translate X kind of starts straight and it moves up like this. Translate Z starts up here with a value of 11.698 and then goes down to frame 41 with a negative value and then kind of has a straight line across to frame 90 with a negative 12 value. So let me uh, close the graph editor for now. Let me show you over here you'll have our view presets and this one right here by default in any case is the perspective slash graph. If I click that one you'll see that it actually splits my view in half where the bottom half is the graph editor and the top half is my perspective view. And I'm actually also going to hide the range slider just to get a little bit more screen space. I'm going to display UI elements range slider just to kind of hide the range slider and give me a little bit more room. So I want to try and have the graph editor and the sphere both visible at the same time and you can kind of see how the movement of the sphere translates to the movements of the animation curves. I'm going to hit play. You can see as the animation plays, and it's going to keep continue to loop, as the animation plays, the red line moves across the graph editor indicating the progression of time from frame 1 to frame 90. The sphere starts over here on the left. Let me actually stop it first. Go back to the beginning. The sphere's po initial position is at this left corner which gives it a negative 11 value approximately at translate X and a positive 11 value approximately at translate Z. So they're kind of mirrored where in this corner you have a negative X value and a positive Z value. Let's hit play again. As it gets to the middle, and I'll stop it again, around frame 41 is where I set the keyframe for this corner. You'll have both translate X and translate Z have negative 12 values approximately. So then you'll see that our curves kind of converge at this point here where both are kind of at the same position in the graph. 
And then we hit play again, and the, the sphere moves to this corner, where at this point, at frame 90, we have a positive 11 translate x and a negative 12 translate z. So approximately 12 for both, except one is positive and one is negative. So the, the curves flip-flop in that way. So as the sphere moves from one point to the other, one keyframe to the other. You can see the animation curve in the graph editor reflect those changes. So that's the graph editor in a nutshell, when how it displays information to you as the viewer. Within the graph editor you'll have these animation curves that show you the information changing over time, the values of these channels changing throughout the course of the animation you've played. So as before, we deleted keyframes within the graph editor by simply selecting them and deleting them. We can also move keyframes, edit them within the graph editor as well. For example, I have the Translate X channel selected, and I can click and drag a marquee selection box around this middle keyframe at frame 41. If I middle mouse click and drag, I actually move that keyframe around within the graph editor. I'm changing not only its value by moving it up and down, but also where in time it is placed within the animation by moving left and right. So by moving it, for example, over here, let's actually go about right here. Let's go down and over. So now at frame 69, translate x has a value of negative 19.214. You can also change these values here within these stat windows. If you want to go to frame, for example, 70 for a round number, and instead of 19.214, we can say negative 20. Hit enter. And now our keyframe has positioned itself at frame 70 with a value of negative 20. So now when we skim through our animation, you can see how the sphere moves further out beyond that corner. You can see how it moves over there. Let me change the camera a little bit. It's moving out there way beyond the grid. And then it shoots back over here. <laughs> so we've drastically changed how our animation plays by editing that keyframe within the graph editor. Let me hit play. You can simply see what it does. So by moving that keyframe from the translate X over and down, we've had we get this kind of swirly motion with the sphere as it moves and swirls over and skims back around to where we ended it to begin with. Very simply you can go in here in the graph editor and edit and change your keyframes. Let me go through that again real quickly. So by selecting a keyframe, I can move it, or by hitting delete, I can delete it, like so. So now this Translate Z channel no longer has that middle keyframe. So it doesn't do that swirl anymore. Remember before, after I had changed the Translate X middle keyframe, the sphere would kind of go over here and swirl back this way, and then come back to this corner. Now it's simply moving straight out to that position and then back to our ending position in a much more elongated L shape instead of having that spin that it did in the middle. So deleting keyframes, editing keyframes, you can also, like I said, you can type in your values in the stat window here to change the values of keyframes without having to drag them around. You can also add new keyframes within the graph editor. If I were to go to, say, frame 30, you see my red line here is indicating that I'm at frame 30 when I'm dragging it within the time slider. At frame 30 I can select my Translate Z animation curve, right click, and I have the option to insert a key. If I select that option, it inserts a keyframe at that position. I can then move it as I wish and type in values here to change the position and value of that new keyframe. You'll also notice that they have these little pink handles on either side of the selected keyframes when I move them. In addition to moving the keyframe itself, I can use these handles, left click and drag a little box around one or the other. If I left click and drag while I have one of those handles selected, you can see how it bends the animation curve around that keyframe. The keyframe itself is still in the same position, but it changes the interpolation or the in-betweening of what happens between keyframes. If you'll look up here, you'll see my sphere is moving even though none of the keyframes are changing because I'm changing how the curve or how the motion is interpolated between keyframes. If I do like so, 
you see that my sphere moves backwards off the grid and then back forwards and then to the other corner. So the graph editor is very powerful, especially since with this split view you can see the changes as you do them without having the graph editor kind of cover up your scene. So these little handlebars on both sides of keyframes change how those curves come in or out of the keyframes in question. Like so. And you get very drastic differences as you do so. You can see here as we start at the beginning with this kind of dip and hill within our curve we get a very drastic change in how our sphere reacts. It's kind of going back and forth around and through. Hit the space bar to maximize our perspective view. I can rewind and hit play. You can see how our sphere moves with those changes made in the graph editor. That's the graph editor in a nutshell. You can you can edit, delete, or add keyframes within it. You can change the interpolation between keyframes to get very drastic movement differences in your animation. In our next part, we're going to actually learn how to make a ball bounce. The legendary bouncing ball tutorial has been used for years to really demonstrate animation in Maya using the graph editor, and we're going to do that too. It's always a fun tutorial. It uh, really demonstrates the power of the graph editor, and I hope you enjoy it.